Good afternoon, Packers fans. Welcome to your Packers Daily Chat, coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels. It is Monday. Hope you all had a great weekend. The Packers, uh, not making tons of news. However, there is a little bit of news coming out earlier this afternoon. The Packers have released safety James Wiggins, a uh, guy they signed to a futures contract back in January. And yes, the gentleman they assigned number 31 not too many days ago is now on the street, leaving one spot remaining on the 90-man offseason roster. And no, I don't think this has anything to do with Adrian Amos, although you would never know that judging from the mentions on my Twitter account. Anyway, yes, the Packers have a spot open. Uh, Could they call Adrian Amos? Yes, theoretically they could. I think that ship has sailed. We'll see. But there is a spot open on the 90-man roster. Today, I did want to talk about uh, the evaluation of said roster, the public perception of said roster between uh, Rob Domofsky's little write-up on ESPN.com and their power rankings and PFF ranking the off-season rosters of every team. I know that the national perception, even somewhat local when you talk to Rob, uh, perception of the roster uh, will be a negative one more often than not. And I'm here to tell you that you can safely ignore all of that. Now, look, I'm not sitting here telling you that they're going to be trotting out a you know roster full of all-stars and all-pros and future Hall of Famers. I'm far from it. I understand there's a lot of growth and development needing to be had across the board when it comes to the Green Bay Packers in 2023. However, I will enlighten folks in, in saying that uh, a lot of that kind of uh, picking a part of the roster and ranking them and showing where they've gotten weaker or better – Uh, it takes place in a vacuum, and the idea being like if they took the field right now, today, or Sunday, this Sunday afternoon in mid-May, yes, the Packers would have a lot of inexperience and a lot of growing in problematic areas, no doubt about it. Thankfully, that doesn't happen. Uh, There's a long way to go before they kick off in September. There will be a lot of uh, classroom meetings, a lot of work being done on and off the field. There will be a whole training camp and three preseason games, and a whole lot of will be done to get these kids ready to hit the ground running. And I say kids in the sense that, yes, there are a lot of rookies that will be vying for important roles on this team. But there's also a lot of guys who are still young, who have played maybe one or two years in the NFL, who are still growing and developing and still turning into the players that the Packers expect them to. Um, and that's not even to mention guys like Kenny Clark or David Bakhtiari or Aaron Jones or Jair Alexander. You can't tell me a roster with those gentlemen who I just listed is something, you know, in the bottom part of the league when it comes to talent acquired and ready to roll out uh, in week one of the 2023 season. I understand there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to the Green Bay Packers, and I also get that they're going from a four-time MVP future Hall of Fame quarterback to a guy starting his first full season. There's a lot of unknowns there, and there's a lot of kind of guys doing their job who are going to be dependent on the guy under center doing his job. We don't really know what that's going to look like. But this idea that the Packers are bereft of talent is a laughable one. There's a whole lot of ball game left when it comes to the development of this roster. Um, Anybody, you know, trying to determine, oh, they've really fallen off because they've lost Randall Cobb and Alan Lazard. Come on, people. What are we doing here? Respect to those guys. They gave their all, and they represented the green and gold, and they absolutely carried the G while they were in Green Bay. But it's not like they were some top-flight talent that the Packers now are suddenly going to be floundering when it comes to trying to figure out who's going to catch the football. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here, people. Again, nothing but respect for the work they did as Green Bay Packers, but uh, it's a whole new world and a whole new reset in Green Bay. And to treat it as anything other than that is kind of laughable. And I understand people got to make content. It's a 365 gig. We're all just trying to fill these airwaves and or pixelate whatever our content gods demand of us. So I get it. But, uh, yeah, this idea that, oh, this roster, yeah, if they had to roll out on Sunday, (laughs) it'd be interesting. But, thankfully, they don't. And look, I say this all the time, and I'm going to kind of probably repeat myself till I'm blue in the face throughout this entire season, but the Packers operate differently than everybody. Who else in the league is sitting their first-round quarterback three years prior to putting him on the field? You mean other than the Green Bay Packers? (laughs) Not too many people. Not too many teams operate that way. 
So to try to fit them in the mold of every other team is kind of funny to me. And I understand it's a bottom line business. Wins and losses are all that matter, and that will come to fruition when 2023 kicks off and we see how they're doing, so to speak, and how that experiment and or MO, that way of operating, what kind of fruits it's bearing. Again, I get it. I understand. But it's pretty clear the Packers have taken the long view here. Anybody trying to, like, hammer away at, oh, what a talent-deficient roster this is, or, oh, there's just there's no answers here, or they've gotten so much worse, is clearly not looking through the correct lens, and they can be safely set to ignore. That's all i got to say about that. Hope you're all doing well. Good to see everybody in the comments section mixing it up. Dennis is here. Of course, Dennis is here. Dennis already starts us off. I wonder if Nagler will address the Mason Crosby articles that all came out after Molly Crosby's message. You mean the one she deleted? No one reads articles anymore. They go by what the headline says. I don't know. All I go by is the uh, tweets that Tyler puts up. And, man, his tweet about that tweet was amazing. The video that he did was absolutely impeccable, outstanding. Man, I don't know. It sure sounds like they've closed the door there. I mean, I know Molly deleted it, and she probably got, I don't know, inundated with uh, tweets, and maybe Mason said something to her. I don't know. But, you know, it sure sounds like the door is closed there. And I, I don't think anybody's telling any tales out of school by saying so. So as for articles or whatever, I have no idea. I don't, I don't read articles, Dennis. I just look at the headlines. No, I'm kidding. I joke. I jest. I kid. I kid because I love. Ooh, Callum asks, what are my win-loss predictions? Ask me at the end of training camp. Every year, that's when I give those. Throughout the summer, anything's possible. But right now, I got nothing for you. Oh, oh, don't want to miss a super chat. I think I got a super chat, but I don't want to miss it. Where are you at? Super chat. There you are. Packers, total access. What's up, man? Absolutely love the call sheet that Dusty Evely is doing at Cheesehead. Nags, who is your choice at right tackle, Tom or Yash? Well, first of all, thanks so much for the call out for for Dusty. I saw that he appeared on your program the other day. Uh, That was a great conversation, dude. Uh, And as far as uh, choice at right tackle, um, my suspicion is it's going to be Yash because I think Tom is going to win the center job. And I know that they haven't said anything in that regard. Nothing has even been intimated as far as, like, that is where Zach is going to try to compete or anything like that. But... I just got this nagging suspicion that they're gonna they're gonna take a look there, and I think if Zach's allowed to compete at center, he might win that gig. So, you know, if they stick with Josh Myers at center, you know, give me Zach Tom, um, and I know you know Yash is is back on the on the tender and he's back or he signed his tender, so he's back for one more year, and I think he's an invaluable asset as far as a guy who has started a whole lot of games for you at left and right tackle, but. I think Zach's a better player overall, and that's not to take anything away from Yash. Um, but I suspect if they, you know, straight up have that competition in camp, I think Zach wins it. That's my guess sitting here mid-May, right? A lot of ball game left. but um, And, yes, thank you for uh, shouting out Dusty. Dusty's the man, the absolute man. Uh, is Tom stout enough for center? I think so. Was Scott Wells stout enough for center? I think so. Packers roster has more upside than any team in the NFL. I don't know about that, Moon Man, but I think it's got a ton. There's no doubt about it. You know, there's a lot of high ceilings ready to be trotted out there on the practice field at Radnitschke Field this summer, and I'm excited to watch. No question. Who has ticket knowledge? Should I buy now for the Raiders game or wait? Tony, Tony, is there any doubt? Is there any question, sir? Just go to cheeseheadtv.com. Check out the schedule or the app and go to Ticket King. We got 2023 Packers tickets, both home and away, every single game. Check out Ticket King. Go to cheeseheadtv.com. Won't steer you wrong, buddy. Both the schedule and uh, on, the, on the website and the app have all the tickets you need, including to the Raiders game. Check out Ticket King, my guy. Come on now. Come on now. Support the local Wisconsin dudes. Don't buy from Ticketmaster. You know you want to. John Simitovich, thanks for the super chat. <laughs> Has anybody checked on Matt Mamba is doing? I think Matt is still in the denial phase. Uh, every time I see him commenting on the fact that Mason's probably gone, 
Uh, he keeps saying that it's not official. So I'm pretty sure that he is, uh, yeah, in full denial mode, which, come on, understandable completely. Uh, but yes, our heart definitely goes out to Matt Mamba. No doubt about it. Brandy, Nags, Packers going with speed over bigger guys on the defensive line, right? I don't know if that's strictly the case as far as like a, a sh philosophy shift or anything like that, but it certainly looks that they want to get more athleticism and a little bit more speed or and or disruptiveness along their front, judging by the dudes they picked in the draft. Now that said, you know, they're still going to be rolling out TJ Slayton and Kenny Clark and, you know, some bigger dudes. Uh, but yeah, the, the kind of mold that they've had throughout the last number, you know, X number of years, I mean, specifically since Matt's been in town, is they've wanted bigger guys in a three technique role and some of those defensive end roles in a classic three, four sense. Um, but yeah, it, now, could it eventually signal some kind of shift in that regard? Maybe long term if those guys develop and ball out. But um, I wouldn't say that it's, you know, strict one way or the other. I mean, obviously, you want good football players more than anything else. Um, but it's notable. It's definitely notable that they went kind of against body type comparative to what they've thrown out there the last, like, three or four years. No doubt about it. Uh, Packers are going 17-0, Nags. Michael, I like where your head's at. Uh, we got Jeezy Baby up in here. What's up, man? Do you think Simone Biles' fandom will get us over the edge? She had a championship pedigree that can soak into the locker room. <laughs> I mean, I think that's just science, right? I mean, that's obvious. I mean, I understand and I appreciate the question, but I think it goes without saying, does it not? I mean, if Simone Biles is cheering for your team, that means you're Super Bowl bound in the next two or three years. I think that was, I read that somewhere. Mm. Robert, what's up, man? Thanks for Super Chat. Might have blocked out too much noise at my brother's wedding last weekend when I drunkenly bet my Chicago family 200 we'd win the division this year. Go, Pat, go. It's only 200. What's 200 in a bet with family that the Packers are going to be victorious? I mean, right? Look, I understand. We all get to a point where we're sick of the noise. But you just got to block it out. You just got to block it out. And if it takes drunkenly betting family members that the Packers are going to you know, win the division, I think you're just carrying the G, my friend. There's any doubt there. No problems whatsoever. Ryan, thanks for the super chat. When will we know what the ticket prices will be for the season? Which way is the best to try and get disabled seating tickets? If Green Bay goes 10-7 and 7 and makes the playoffs, I'll do spin-outs in my power chair. Ryan, I believe there are allocations for disabled seating on Ticket King if you go and check out the games. And uh, I believe, if I remember right, I haven't looked recently, but I believe in the past they've had um, a drop-down menu where you can find it. Um, if you go to, Like I said, just go to cheeseheadtv.com. Check out the uh, schedule, and there's a link to tickets for every game right there on the website or the app. <laughs> Brandy, Z Smith to Cleveland Browns, meh. Yeah, the Z thing is interesting, isn't it? I mean, at this point, you can joke about the fact that he's been on so many teams. I, I do think he's still a very good football player. It is fascinating to watch his tenure there in Minnesota, though, and especially last season how, you know, started out gangbusters. Really played well early in the year and really disappeared down the stretch. I mean, vanished. Now, maybe that's the scheme. Maybe that's teams adjusting to him. Who knows? But, yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was not good. It was not pretty. I mean, you don't have to look much further than that game in Lambeau Field. The Packers absolutely neutralized him. He did precious little in that game. And that was pretty on par with kind of the last month or so of his season. So, yeah, I think... It will be interesting to watch him in Cleveland. I do think he's landed in a good spot. There's no doubt about that. And I think, like I said, I think he's still very talented. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm just waiting for him to, like, start, you know, pumping up the love for the Browns fans and how he's always wanted to be there or some nonsense. You know, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait for that. Shout out Z. Ken, thanks for the super chat. Who will be a first-time Pro Bowl pick for the Packers this year? Ooh, good question. Uh, I'm going to go with Christian Watson. And I know, like, receivers are crowded field, but uh, I think he's going to put up a lot of yardage and a lot of touchdowns, and it's going to be hard to deny. But that's my guess sitting here mid-May of 2023. Rick says, I love Z, but he's a malcontent. 
I mean, I don't know if he's malcontent, but I mean, the evidence would certainly suggest it on the outside looking in, but not being in the buildings, not talking to the people who are working with him day in and day out. You know, I've not really heard from anybody who worked with him with the Packers that he was a quote malcontent, but, um, you know, I think there's definitely emotion involved there. I think, you know, the we all know that the reports about him being upset about not being named a captain in Green Bay and things of that nature. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to say without direct knowledge, you know. But I feel you, man. I think it's, you know, by the info that has been put out there publicly and by some actions uh, by, you know, clubs being willing to move on, sure, sure feels like it's right, right? No doubt. Ooh, New York Chiefs said, when is Kerry the G coming to Kettle? <sighs> Good question. Good question. Hopefully soon. Hopefully this summer. I can't guarantee it, but hopefully this summer. And speaking of Kerry the G and Cheese said TV beverages, be on the lookout in the not-so-distant future for possibly another offering from your friends at Cheese Head TV. I can say no more. What are my high hopes for Jordan Love this year? Callum? You mean not just my hopes, but my high hopes. Um, my high hopes are that he starts all 17 games and leads the Packers to the playoffs and uh, learns from his mistakes, plays at a high level, and gets us all excited for year two where they make a Super Bowl run. Those are my high hopes for Jordan Love. Carl, thanks for the Super Chat. Remember Farr's first starting season? Remember Rogers' first starting season? I think Love's season will be a fun ride, just like his predecessors. I do. It's so funny. People always mention Rogers' first season as a starter, but it's very rare that people remember or mention Farr's first season as a starter. Man, those first few Favre years were up and down, man, to the point where Holmgren almost benched him. All those interceptions, all those dumb plays. I mean, it was it was a tough time, man. It was a wild ride when – Brett first got the reins, so to speak, you know? A lot of ups and downs. You saw the highs, and you saw the great plays, and the touchdown throws, and the lasers, and it was great until he made some boneheaded mistakes that he didn't seemingly learn from, and it was a touch and go there for a while. But, yeah, obviously, eventually became a first ballot Hall of Famer, three-time MVP, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, I think uh, Love, who knows, as far as, I don't know if it looks like Aaron's or Brett's or what have you, but... I think, as I've said, there are going to be some real tough times. People got to be ready for it. But I think there's going to be a lot of exciting moments as well. It's for me, like I was saying to Callum, it's all about what he learns from, how he develops, how he grows. You know, that's the biggest thing, the biggest thing about this season. <laughs> Wildy said Z is one of the meanest players he's ever been around. Yeah, but have you met Jason Wildy? Come on. If you just make a, like, somewhat, I'm not even talking like extremely, I'm talking just a somewhat negative comment, Wildy gets offended. So, you know, come on. You're really going to take Wildy as the gauge of niceness or meanness? I mean, much love and respect to Jason. Respect the work he does. Covers the Packers like a blanket. He's excellent at his job. But judging people's meanness, come on now. Wildy's a, Wildy's a flower in a, in a delicate situation in the world. Uh, what else we got, folks? John, thanks for the Super Chat. If it's a carry the G IPA, dot, 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 it is not, John. But that's a good guess. Oh, that was close, David. David wrote, no more fireballs, please. It's no more rocket balls, please. Get your NFL Films quotes correct, sir. I'm kidding, but it is no more rocket balls. Ed, thanks for the Super Chat. Last year, someone in the PAC organization failed to send out the email letting other teams know how awesome our defense is. Hopefully that has been rectified. <laughs> I want to, you know, remember last off season, last off season, everyone, and I mean, everyone was talking about how the Packers were going to have a top five defense. And every day I got here on Packers daily and said, yeah, the talent's there on paper, no doubt about it, but none of that means anything until they take the field. They got to do the work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then week one happened and it all fell apart and it was like, uh Oh, and then the whole half of the you know, first half of the season, they look like garbage and everyone's like, Oh gosh, what's going on? Like, 
Mm. Fool me once. I'm not even talking about, like, they could have a top whatever defense. I just want competence. Like, Joe Barry has put me in the place where now I'm where I was with the special teams for, like, a decade. I'm just – I just want competent defense. Is that too much to ask with, what, seven, eight first-round picks taking the field for you? Don't get me started, people. No excuses. No excuses this year. None. Zero. 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 Shane, thanks to the super sticker. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Prolific94 says, can't wait to see Jaden Reed cook. I think he will fit very well with J-Lo, Watson, and Dobbs and company. Could not agree more, sir. I think you're going to see him all over the place. And I do think you're going to see him utilized quite a little bit in that Tyler Irvin role that Tyler Irvin had and then seemingly disappeared after Tyler Irvin got hurt and uh, dismissed. Uh, They haven't really gone back to a lot of that since those, you know, first two years. I think you're going to see a lot. I think you're going to see a big return to that style of offense. Um, A lot of the jet motion, orbit motion stuff, getting him in space, both, you know, to get him the football, but also to make defenders take false steps and eye candy, what have you. But then I also think you're going to see him utilized traditional slot stuff and perimeter. And I think he's going to be all over the place. And I am very excited. Ryan, thanks for the super chat. Why can't this organization put together a good defense? Why can't the Bears find a quarterback? Sometimes it's just in your DNA and your everything that you've built or try to build is centered around that thing. And the Packers have made it about quarterback play and, by extension, the offense. Man, I don't know. If I could tell you that, I'd be working there. It's tough. It's tough to watch, though. It is tough to watch. There's no doubt about it. Um... Go Pack Go 12. That's all I need to hear. Have a good feeling about this year. You know what? So do I. I'll tell you what. I got you know, I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling about 2023. That's why I said just block out the noise. Block out the noise. Let them say whatever they're going to say about the Green Bay Packers this season because they don't know. They think they know, but they don't know. All right, everybody. I'm going to have to get going. I can't thank you enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, Right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please do me a monster favor. Hit like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. And then tell your friends and tell your family. Cheesehead TV. We are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great night. Go Pack Go.